Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode, and I've got a fantastic guest from you coming out of the UK, uh, Chitty. Um, he's going to talk to us all about business growth strategy. He's an accountant by trade and profession, but he he's uh, going to talk to us about leveraging technology, mindset, uh, business growth momentum here for all the entrepreneurs looking to grow and scale their uh, business. So uh, Chitty, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah. Um, so I know briefly, um, just talk about your company, what you do, how you got there and how the audience can benefit. Sure. So if I go way back, I, I didn't know I'm, I'm an accountant by trade, but I actually didn't want to be an accountant <laughs> because I thought it was really boring. But <laughs> ultimately, I just fell it when I was studying, I, I liked more the numbers area of things. And then it, and then I discovered being a qualified accountant, which seemed to guarantee me a certain income. So I went down that route and I worked, you know, I wanted to work in, in the big firms. So I worked in some of the big banks. And as time progressed, I, I learned a lot from them, but I also craved to be, to be free and be out there. And that's when I set up my, my practice during COVID or just, just about the time of COVID. And, and that's what we do now. We, we, we help businesses help them with their tax advice and growth strategies. Yeah, it's really interesting because um, what I really love is, uh, <laughs> I love how you uh, describe the accounting profession, but you can, <laughs> you can uh, I mean, you can apply it to anything. So I love how you, you know, found your niche. So, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, some of the audience there are um, CEOs and they've got um, uh, businesses, uh, you know, tech entrepreneurs, and they want to know kind of like, effective strategies for accelerating business growth. So what, you know, kind of, you know, kind of give us the overlay on the land. Well, I think the biggest one I've found in terms of growth is really around the goal that we're shooting for. And I think what I find is a lot of times is where business owners who are already in business and they find it quite tough. There's a lot going on. They're quite busy. And so when you ask them what's next or where do you want to get to, it's always kind of like, I'll do 20% more, 10% more, we can grow, I get one more staff member. So, so it's almost like you're already constrained by the box that you're in. And so you, your imagination just pushes you a little bit further out of that box, right? But when I flip this on his head, and we don't, we're not talking about where you are, if you kind of get someone to just for a second, just imagine if, where, what do you want for yourself, your life, your family? And then what you find is they, a, a big goal comes out. And then once you flip that onto your personal goals, flip that onto the business goals, you then find some, I, I give you, just to bring this to life, I'll give you an example. I spoke to a guy who was a, a fitness trainer and we had a conversation and he wanted, and then we said, look, he, he told me what he was doing. He had a few clients in the gym. And then we said, look, what do you what do you want to be doing? Like, what do you want from your life? He wanted to buy a flat. He wanted to he wanted to you know he wanted this amount of you know money to take out. He wanted hundred k and and so on. So so then it's like, okay, you want hundred k? Then you flip that on his head, and we end up with a business that's going to provide him that's going to make turnover four hundred k like 350 to 400 K. And that was way out of his imagination because you think hundred K I can take hundred K, but actually you can't. And so in the end, the strategies that came out were now like, it's not going to work in the gym. We need online, we need marketing. And so those are the kind of things that brings about uh, when, when people kind of let themselves really feel for those goals or dream really, and then try and achieve them. Yeah, I love that. And what's interesting is, you know, kind of I, I've, I've noticed as I reach the uh, the limits of the threshold, it's kind of like, do you go forward or you go back? And it's kind of like your your um, emotional temperature, your thermostat and the uh, threshold. Uh, I think people call it the, um, what is it called? The uh, success barriers or um, yeah. Yeah. fear of success. So um, then next question is, um, what are common pitfalls businesses face when trying to scale and how can they avoid them? I'll give you a couple. It's a good question. The first one is cash. <laughs> I think cash flow. Like when you look at the amount of businesses that go under, the bulk of them are cash flow related. And where it's really unfortunate 
is for businesses who have a model that works. So they have a way of getting clients or customers or selling products, but they somehow slip and go under because they run out of cash. And so being able to manage cash flow, which is different to just looking at your bank account, but as businesses start to scale and things start to move really quickly, cash flow uh, needs change and they vary and not being able to forecast that can be a problem and it could be critical. So that's one thing that uh, people miss out on. And the second one, which also can be satisfied, can satisfy the cash flow needs, is just data, it's just business owners being able to understand how you're performing and and the, the, the value in that data, the juice that's in that data of your actual business performance. But a lot of businesses, they they kind of feel that that's something that you know the big guys or the big firms could need to do, and so they just think I'm a small business owner, so I'm just going to wait till the deadline of when my accounts are due, which is which is many months after the year end, to actually know what my business is performing, what my business is doing, and that at that point that data is obsolete, and so there's a lot of missed there's a lot of missed opportunities to analyze our margins and all sorts of juicy data that's in our numbers. So it's really getting those two, that habit in place is, is something that I feel business owners miss out on if you're not already doing it. Yeah, which kind of uh, brings me to my next question is because, um, you know, this is a um, business entrepreneurship podcast about mindsets. And so, um, you know, talk about some of the mindsets, the key mindsets that help entrepreneurs, um, whether it's in the day to day, um, for example, financial health, stability, cash flow, tax um and also um when it comes to like vision and strategy uh talk about kind of some of the you know top three mindsets that's that's a good one so in terms of mindset i i mean i i think that that is something that is is impacts life i mean but more so in business where one of the 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 key elements of the mindset is really getting people to, and it's, it's, it happens to all of us, is really ad- being able to adopt or be that person. You know, we have that vision and some people don't because they just start off a business. It just comes out of a need and you, you just can't go in day to day, but you haven't really adopted the mindset. You haven't really visualized yourself in the suit or dress of that person who is achieving what you want to achieve. Hmm. And sometimes it's even it's, it goes as far back as saying you haven't even you haven't even thought about what you want to achieve, but I think once you put yourself in those shoes and start to live it, it would it, you would start to see changes in the way you think, in the things you approach, in the energy you have. You know, just a, a, as an example, when I when I think of a business that's growing, it's like a plane on a runway. So a plane, I mean, back in the days, right? When you go on the runway, when the plane's taking off, everything is shaking. Everything is shaking. The, you know, the, the, the bloody lockers at the top are about to pop open. That's the force that's required as the plane before it takes off, right? That's the amount of energy that plane needs to go through before it takes off. So it's really, once we visualize, like the plane decides where it's going to go, then we would go through what we need to go through to be able to get there. But without adopting that, without visualizing it, we kind of rob ourselves of that effort, that energy. Yeah, I love that. Um, which kind of, uh, you know, as a follow-up question, um, and I love talking about uh, technology. And so one thing is, um, how can businesses leverage digital tools and technology to drive business expansion? And um, specifically, what I'm interested in is um, software and a lot of like for um a lot of companies they use peoples and processes but now a lot of companies are using software and ai so talk about this trend and um you know what it means for businesses scale but also what it means for the impact on human lives that's a great great question so uh, uh, just to help this land i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm going to give you an analogy and it's basically i've got a friend a friend of mine who's a consultant right and he when he goes to operate, he arrives and, you know, he, someone's got his scrubs, he puts the scrubs on, you know, the gloves, all the best that he needs to put on. And he goes in, 
operates and he you know he wake you know, he walks out and then he just kind of gets rid of her stuff and he's on right so he's there for the operation and i think that's i i love that because i believe that's how business owners need to start to think about themselves you need to start to think about what tools are going to help me to do my job in the best way but also what do i need to be doing and not doing if that makes sense so that 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 then we're talking about admin we're talking about bookkeeping we're talking about all those things as a business owner i mean it's, it's not a must but where possible just try and get rid of those things and focus on delivering the business and that would then apply to all business software that would really not because you can get carried away you can just be throwing all tools in the box but it's really starting to understand which tools would help us take some of the admin away help with the impression of the business which is linking to our goals if we want bigger we need to we need to be presenting bigger so there's a the, the list is is long i mean for me the winners are always around your accounting software around anything that's giving you insight on your sales and your costs to be able to improve that but it goes wider than any software that would help your process but also people that would help your process. I love that. It's really really uh, really powerful because uh, I know technology and particular software and AI can really help um, scale your company but then you also have to think about the impact on on human lives and you know and they say that um, I mean if you use it correctly it can help enhance everybody and if you use yeah. it incorrectly then it can really uh, cause a lot of harm. Um mm. yes. Then uh, next question is, uh, you know, kind of um, lessons from past experiences. You know, can you share success stories of um, business that turned around its its health with your help? Or and what are some lessons you've learned from failed businesses and how can others avoid those mistakes? No, that's that's it. So and, and I think this is what when I when I talk about the importance of cash flow, this is one one real example where I had a business owner was a property business and at the point that we noticed this they were starting to you know you know we we, we have gst it's called GST, gst over there gst taxes but in the uk it's called vat so we you collect this so you you invoice and you add your taxes on top and then you essentially pay all or part of that over to the government so essentially if you if you get 100 dollars 100 pounds or whatever it is and you add another 20 because UK is 20%, then you've collected 120. That 20 you've collected is essentially not yours. So when someone gets to the point to pay their GST tax or their VAT and they haven't got the money, that's because they, they've spent it. They spent money that's not yours. And this was happening over and over again because this client, so you know, you try and get on on try and understand what the reason behind it. And he was just struggling with cash flow, with business timing of things like that. So it was really about just spending time with him to really understand where those problems are coming from, building a plan. So by the end of it, we'd be able to clarify his goals, build a plan and identify some of the problems that were not aligned to that plan. Uh, and, you know, it was, it was quite emotional working with him because he was on the brink with his relationships you know, and his business was already at risk, but we managed to, to turn that around, which was, which was great. And that's, that's the bit that we really enjoy doing is really helping businesses thrive. Right. Yeah. Yes. We're really powerful. Um, kind of, uh, round it out, talk about, um, how people can, um, you know, closing thoughts and how can people find you and follow you on your socials, check out your work and so on. So I think in, in closing thoughts is I I, I mean I, every in my journey so far with this business I've met some really great business owners some brave people kind of going against a system that <laughs> we we all like operate under for many years and so it takes it takes courage to go against it and push through all the challenges that they face but it's really uh, my my advice would be to always think about the end destination so it's almost like where do we want to be in five years take time to think about that 
Do we want to sell the business in 10 years? Do we want to be earning this much in 10 years or five years? Do we want to have this much time to ourselves, right? Because sometimes we, we, do, we do this because we want some freedom. We want some time freedom. But then in the end, you know, along the journey, you forget about why you started it and you end up working all hours around the clock. But it's really taking time to understand the reasons or going back to the reasons why we got into this. And then it's then a case of the strategy that then forms your strategy. It's now a question of how am I going to get there? So people like your accountants or you know, if you're in UK, we can help you. But essentially using the resources uh, available to you to, because it's one of those things I always tell people, if you're in a situation, if you don't do anything about it, it's unlikely to change. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Just, I mean, here in the States, you know, we're going through so much turmoil and I think it's kind of this shift between the old and new. And I know UK has adopted a lot of progressive policies and innovation. So um, yeah, really interesting. And for all the audience, I think Chidi for coming on and um, sharing his expertise and, and insight and be sure to give his socials a like and follow, check out his work. And uh, thanks so much for coming on. No, thanks for having me.